Hey everyone, it's Kendall from the Recording Lounge Podcast and the Closet Studios, and today I'm doing a video about a very simple mod that you may need to do on your undertone GB tracker. I actually chased this problem for a number of weeks before I decided to just contact Undertone and ask them about it. Lo and behold, they were aware of the problem and they told me that they were trying to figure out a solution. So here's the situation. If you're using a pedal or a pedal board powered by an isolated power supply like a Strymon or something like that, you're probably not going to have any issues. But listen to what happens when I try to power this pedal through like a single, unregulated, unisolated, one-spot type adapter. Now, the noise isn't that bad, but it's definitely much higher than I'd prefer, and if I was going into a really high gain amp, it would sound much louder. It's certainly way louder than when using the Strymon power supply. So, after contacting Undertone and talking back and forth with Eric and Larry over email, they inform me of a simple mod that they have discovered that would fix this. Turns out, there's a specific resistor inside the GB Tracker that, ironically, was put into the design to help reduce certain types of noise, but it turns out that it can actually make it worse, and in this situation, it does. So we need to modify the GB Tracker, and I have talked this through with Eric, and I know that this is something that works. Uh, he gave me the instructions to do it, so I'm going to show you how to do it. It's incredibly simple, and it can be done in about 10 minutes. Let's check it out. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is disassemble the GB Tracker. We need to unplug it from power. And on the front panel here, there are six screws all around the perimeter that we need to take out. So let's do that first. Okay, now on the back of the unit, you don't want to take out the screws that match the front ones. You actually want to take out the screws on the XLR jacks. Just trust me, this makes a lot more sense once you see it, but the front of the unit will slide out. So it just makes it a lot easier when reassembling. Let's go for it. Okay, so we've got those XLR screws out, and now we can just slide the circuit board out the front and uh, set the chassis aside. It's very simple. So all we have to do is jumper this resistor right here. And when I say jumper, I mean we just need to run a little wire from one side to the other, effectively bypassing the resistor. Uh, you don't have to use anything fancy. You can just use a piece of wire or you can cut off the leg of a resistor like I did. If you want to make a jumper out of a resistor lead or a capacitor lead, just make sure that it's pretty small because we do need to be hooking it around the existing resistor that's in the circuit. So I'm just going to chop it off and we'll shape it to what we need. So here's my little jumper, and I don't know if you can really see on the camera, but it's essentially like a little staple-sized jumper with J-hooks on the side that we're going to basically put right down on the board and hook around the existing resistor so we get a really good mechanical connection. So I'm just going to hook it over the resistor, and I'm doing it on this side since it's the open side of the board. It will be easy to work on, and if we ever need to remove it later, it'll be pretty easy to do. You won't be able to miss it. So we want to make sure that we solder this in really nicely and make sure it won't jiggle around. So the guys at Undertone actually recommended that I do this on top of the board rather than the standard, you know, remove the component, use the solder sucker, replace with just a straight wire. So I took their advice, and I'm going to be doing it over top of the board with the jumper. It's pretty quick. You just got to make sure you add a little bit of solder, not too much, and check your connection with some pliers. Make sure it's not going to jiggle around. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to trim off some of the excess here just to make sure it's clean and wipe off any other little flecks that you see. And we're done. So reassembling the unit is really easy. You're just going to take the chassis and line up the board with the second slot here. And you'll see that it will slide straight back. Now watch out because these may not line up perfectly. You just got to nudge them a little bit and they'll snap into place and they'll be flush with the back there. So now we just need to add our screws and we'll be good to go. Okay, the mod is done. Let's test it out and see if it fixed the problem. 
Okay, we've got the pedal going into the GB Tracker, and the pedal's being powered by a standard wall wart type adapter. Let's see if we get our noise problem. Nothing. Dead silent. It sounds great. In fact, I took some measurements of this so you could see the results. As you can see here, the red is where we were before. We have all those harmonics, those buzzy harmonics coming through in the mids and highs. And the white is where we are now. So, problem solved. And in case you're curious, this graph shows the difference between powering with a Strymon power supply and powering with the one-spot type adapter with the mod. As you can see, they're pretty much identical. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. I wanted to pass along that Undertone will be releasing some instructions and offering some options for addressing this, but hopefully this video was helpful for you. In the meantime, as always, make sure to check out the podcast. Also make sure to check out Eric Valentine's channel, Making Records with Eric Valentine. Super awesome channel. Special thanks to Eric and Larry for helping me work through this situation and coming up with a plan to fix it so quickly. From the time I contacted them about the issue to the time I got a solution and did the mod myself, it was like a number of days. So that's pretty amazing customer service. Make sure you like and subscribe. Make sure you check out the podcast and check out our Discord channel. You can find that over at recordingloungepodcast.com. Thanks. I'll talk to you next time.